Hey guys, welcome to Quinian's Budget Crafts. So I was messing with my gas land stuff and I realized that I've made roads and whatnot, but I don't have any barriers, so uh, let's make some of those. All right, so for these uh, concrete barriers here, the Jersey barriers, whatever you want to call them, the only detail I left off is that they will either have a hole or two holes actually on either side, or they'll have like a little slot underneath for like the, the forklift tines to go into. I left those off of these. It, it doesn't really matter. You don't need them at this scale, but you can put them in there if you want. As far as the shape of them, I actually looked it up and transposed all this into uh, 164 scale. That's way too much work and too hard to cut. So, I made a little uh, frame here to go ahead and cut these out with. If you want this frame, that's available on the uh, Tabletop Dungeoneers Tech Files channel. I forgot where it is. You'll, you'll see it. You go look for the Tech Files. Anyway, I made a little frame, so you can just take a little block of foam, and you stick the foam in the frame, like so, and then you can just run it through the hot wire. Adjust this camera, and I'll show you how that works. So you just get it in the frame, just hold on to the thing so you don't burn yourself, and then just run it through the hot wire. It's pretty simple. I cut these a little bit short so they don't fit as tight as I would like. Uh, and I would like to be able to turn down the hot wire, but that's okay. It'll still work on this El Cheapo one here. Just put the thing up there and run it down the, uh, pull the excess off, turn it over, and do the exact same thing. As far as the top of it goes, you can cut that with a knife or you can use the hot wire if you want. You could actually do this whole thing with a knife if you wanted to. And it's on there for now. <laughs> Anyway, there you go. Got a little barricade. It's the right size, right profile, all that good stuff. And so you just zip these out as fast as you want. You can also use the cutoffs here to clean the blobs because they'll melt weird goop into your your thing like this right here. If you can see that or not, there's a goopy blob chunks. That's okay, I'm not making these perfect, so um, don't really need to have them exactly if you ended up not getting your cuts exactly perfect, like this one's a little, a little messed up, that's fine. You can always where to go. Do this with it. Mess it up on purpose. Just get little holes and stuff. Uh, you could also like poke bullet holes into it because you know gas lands. But anyway, that's how you cut these out. As far as painting, we'll paint everything at the end. So let's go to the next barriers type. Okay, so for the. Um, the little standard metal ones. This is actually a little bit on the large side compared to a car, but uh, it'll be all right. Uh, the uh, reason this is so big is because I'm using cardboard. If you were to use like that um, corrugated paper, you can get it at some craft stores. I don't seem to have it. Uh, that would be thinner, but if you want to use cardboard, this is the result you'll end up with. So what we do is we just take some cardboard and peel both sides of it and then peel this gunk out of it. Miller from Miller's Marvelous Miniverse has a pretty good video on doing this cardboard uh, with water. You soak it and pull all the stuff off. Every time I've tried that though, the corrugations come out uh, a bit too much for my liking. So, decided to go the other way on the uh, elemental attacks of the cardboard and I burn it off. So let's go ahead and get this all peeled and then I'll show you burning this stuff. Alright, if you are going to burn this, do be careful because it is paper. After all, I don't want the whole thing on fire. And I know I only need uh, two of the things because at least where I am, the the uh, sticks, the uprights are attached to two and then the one points outward, so I only need this bit. So you just um, burn it from the bottom and let the flame go up. And just pass the lighter over it carefully, just burn those bits off. If you end up blackening a little, that'll be okay because we're going to paint it anyway. Just don't, uh, don't actually set the thing on fire. There we go. No more fuzz on this. We'll do it the other side. Now we can cut that out. We want to try and mimic um, the highway barriers where it's got the uprights on the two pieces and then the one single piece in the middle sticks out. And then these pieces, the, the um, edges, kind of roll towards the highway a little bit. It's, it's going to be impossible with the normal shape of the cardboard, but if you give yourself enough leeway when you cut it, you can make that work. So we'll just cut right along here. Yeah, 
And then as for the length of these strips, you can do whatever is going to make the most sense for your game. Uh, this cardboard ended up being 5 inches on its own. Like, that's what the size of the box was, so I'm just using it as is. And the ends of these things are usually just flattened and flared out, so if you wanted to, to do that, you'd get pretty much the same effect as, as uh, the real ones on the highway. For assembly, we're just going to use some matchsticks. You can cut them to whatever length you want, or you can leave them long for right now and then trim them after you've gotten them on there. But uh, what you're going to want is some quarter length pieces. Oops, wrong side. You have some quarter length pieces to act as a little spacer between the upright and the thing itself. Let's go ahead and take some of your matchsticks here and cut them into quarters, or close enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. There, good enough on that. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna use a little bit of super glue, crazy glue, whatever you like. The brush on kind is pretty nice for this. Literally just brush a little bit on, and then you can stick one of the little quarter pieces to it. And it holds pretty much instantly. Now I'm just gonna use that as a guide. Just go ahead mark up this one since I've already got it figured out what spacing I want. I don't have to mess with it anymore. I just keep marking them the same. I did want them to be a little bit off of the edge so that when you have two of them together the spacing on the post is still about the same. So that's why it's not quite to the edge. Then same idea, you just take a little bit of crazy glue, put it on there, stick your stick to it. You could do it the other way around if you wanted to as well. And you can see it's sticking on there instantly, which is real nice. Don't have to spend a lot of time messing with it. For a base for that, I am using a strip of XPS foam that is also 5 inches long, or it's a little shy, but it's okay. Uh, as far as thickness, I don't know. It's, it's about the same as a dollar store foam, but I just happen to have a bunch of this laying around, so I cut this into the same stuff. So, what I'm going to do here is mark where these sticks are where they sit on this thing and then take another matchstick you could use a toothpick or stabby tool like this if you want Doesn't really matter just make some holes stabby tool is probably easier or like a toothpick that'll go through the uh, the foam a whole lot easier now you can take your clippers, trim these down to whatever length you think is probably appropriate. I'm going with um, just a little bit past the the bottom of it there. So if you look at this one, it's about like so to the bottom of the foam. Again, don't get too fussy about it being perfect. I mean, as long as it looks all right, it's fine. It, it, unless you're trying to make like a perfect city layout or something, you don't really need to be perfect. That's one of the cool things about Gaslands, and everything's messed up, so have fun with it. Get a bit of hot glue. And then stick your barricade into the holes where they go. I may not have poked my holes quite center, but that's all right. And if you didn't get them all the way through and they're sticking to the bottom, then you can go put more glue on it, but I don't think I'm going to need to here. So we'll just leave this to set up real quick. It takes a couple minutes, but otherwise this is done aside from painting. So on to the next one. So these barricades are crazy simple. It's just another piece of that thin XPS cut down to 
What is that about an inch and a half, two inches, something like that? It doesn't really matter. You don't have to get too exact. You can make them a bunch of different shapes and sizes. It would be totally fine. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just cut a little chunk of that off. This is also a really good use of your scrap pieces of foam. And also your scrap pieces of toothpicks and your scrap pieces of stir sticks, all the little bits. It's one of the things like shacks and this kind of barricade are really good is they'll use up all your scraps. So you don't have to throw too much stuff away. So um, it's real simple, same thing. You just put your um, sticks in there and then glue it in and, and glue these things on. What I'm going to do though is put these about an inch or so apart, something like that. Make sure that the foam is going to support that spacing and then just start putting some, uh, some little boards on. Start on the top just so I have a clear top portion. This thing probably work right there. Yeah. Put a little more glue underneath where those are sitting so it'll stick really well. Yep. Ah, sticks to me better than it does itself. You could also use uh, wood glue. That's a really good option here. There we go. And then just start layering on all your little pieces. And of course you could do um, nicer ones, but the whole point is it's all broken and stuff. You could also do nice ones and then break it on purpose. I've done that on a few things. Honestly, that's probably tall enough. You don't want them too tall, otherwise it's just gigantic mess in front of your car. And put more glue down because I don't like things coming apart. So then you can take that thing, preferably once the glue is dried, I don't think it has yet, so I might stick myself to it. And stick it in your foam. A little bit of hot glue. Stick the sign in there. And then we can just trim these off the bottom. And there's our little uh, wooden barricade thingamajig. Of course, you can add more stuff to it. You could add skulls or you know, little burnt out signs or anything like that you want to. But that's just the basic form. You can do more as you see fit. So once this all finishes drying, I'll go ahead and paint them. All right, so for the uh, paint scheme, going really, really simple here. We're going to start with the concrete, which is gonna be some pewter gray to do a base coat on that. Good way to hold these things so you don't get paint all over your fingers, just jam a toothpick right up in the bottom. As far as coating these in Mod Podge and black first, you can but I don't really see much point unless you just want a darker appearance because um, the, the Mod Podge doesn't really seem to stiffen things uh, that are already this thick enough to really care. And I would add like an hour's worth of drying time that I don't want to mess with, so. If you wanted to pre-coat yours in some sort of primer or some Mod Podge to stiffen it up, you go right ahead. I'm not going to. But all you gotta do is just go through and sloppily coat everything there's, there's really no rocket science here so just speed through this and real quick before I get in too big of a hurry and paint all these things if you wanted to damage one like this one's kind of messed up because of how it went to the hot wire and you wanted to damage it just use your toothpick or something else sharp and scrape a few little spots out of it you can dig a hole in it whatever kind of damage you're looking for if you wanted to do bullet holes, you can do that. Just use a toothpick and just poke it a bunch. If you poke all the way through, that's going to be totally fine too. Something like that. And then when you paint up something that has this kind of damage on it, just make sure that you get the... Am I washing the camera out here? Just make sure that you get the... Um, paint in this hole like, like put too much if you have to but get all all that in there painted for these ones that you can hold on to the 
part here. You don't really need to stick them with a the toothpick. You can damage these if you want to. I didn't on the other one, so I'm not going to on this one. But uh, it's up to you, however you wanted to go about doing it. If there are glue blobs like this one here that you don't want, you can get rid of those first. But I'm just going to make them part of the thing, so I don't really have to worry about that too much. Alright, so dry brush. Everybody knows how to dry brush. You just take uh, whatever color you're going to dry brush, get a little bit on your brush, and then wipe most of it off. In this case, I'm just using uh, granite gray. It's a little bit lighter. Get a little bit on there. Get most of it off of the brush. And then we can just, you know, hit the edges with it. Um, if there's, like, a fuzzy appearance to the foam, that that does help to sell the concrete look. Concrete has, like, a like a very splotchy sort of look. So that uh, is really, really simple to do with this method just by scrubbing it on there and then let the uh, natural texture of the foam kind of take the paint for you. And of course with these barricades, the uh, the jersey barriers here, you could add um, you know more details or spray paint some graffiti on there, maybe some stickers. Eh, what else might be good? I don't know. Blood splatter, whatever it is you're going for, I guess. Oops. Launch it across the room, why don't I? It looks like the camera is maybe a little bit washed out, but that, uh, that's what the dry brush does to these. It really, really helps the barriers. I will adjust the lights for the, the final thing. But for right now, they're, they're working, so I'm just going to leave them alone. So now, I need to do the wood portion. For the wood, I'm just going to use nutmeg. It's my pretty much go-to color for wood stuffs. Of course, you could mix in like yellow and maybe burnt umber or something like that. Whatever kind of thing you're going for, just the regular old nutmeg seems to do the job pretty well for me. And we'll just smear this on everywhere. There we go. And I said if you wanted to add more color and depth and interest, then you know. Go, go, go nuts with your yellows and um, darker brown or some gray dry brush might actually help that a little bit. And with this, we'll put the uh, brown on the, the support poles. I don't know about where you live, where I am, they use 4x4s for this. So that's what I'm going with for the colors. If they use metal or concrete where you are, then paint them accordingly. Or, you know, whatever style you're going for, I guess it doesn't have to match where, where you live. And of course, don't forget to paint the uh, front part of this post here. You could you could do the painting before assembly. That might actually make things easier. I thought about it when I did the other one, the first ones I did. But I decided it's probably fine. All right, good enough on that. So now we'll do the, um, the metal portion here. So you could use like a silver spray paint. That'd probably work out just fine. Uh, what I did kind of kind of stumbled across this by mistake actually it worked out really well though so I used the gunmetal gray and uh, I thought that was probably too dark so I decided to add some white to it I made it too bright but then when I went back with more of the darker gray that actually worked really really well because it, it did the that splotchy look that galvanized metal has And these don't have to be mixed perfectly either, because you, you do kind of want it a little bit messed up. Now we just start spooning that in there. It's going to be one solid color to start with, but we'll, we'll go back over it with the different paints in a sec. This also wets the cardboard, so if you wanted to uh, try and reshape it a little, now would probably be a good time for that. So it's not going to be a perfect uh, shape. It won't, won't have a consistent curve down it, it'll kind of look like it maybe got hit a few times, which is perfectly acceptable for gas lands. So now that we have one solid too bright color, let's go ahead and take one color of your stuff here and sort of splotch it around. Then take the other color, the, the bright white, and do the same with that. And then just sort of mush them together until they not until they blend, you don't want it blended, obviously, you want it uh, splotchy, but you don't want big, solid, obvious spots. Anywhere you see it needs 
more of one shade than the other. Just go ahead and grab a little bit more on your brush. And stick it on there. And you should end up with something like that. It's got kind of the sort of splotchy effect that galvanized metal's got. You can do it to one side or both sides. up to you. I'm actually going to do it to both. And then one final possibly unnecessary step is to do some rocks and some grout powder. You could do sand. You could do uh, regular flocking, like grass or whatever. Depends on what you're going for. Let's go ahead and put a few rocks wherever you want them. To make the rocks stay, we'll just put a little drop of super glue. Here, I know I want to put a rock around the base of this thing because I had the mishap with the hot glue. Also, the extra super glue around this will help to uh, hold the thing in place. Which is probably a good thing. So, I'll put down a pretty good blast of hairspray. I'm going to probably not do it on the mat though, actually. Take our grout powder and one of these little brushes here. Just get some powder on the brush, kind of like you're doing makeup. I swear, I have no idea how makeup works. Anyway, just dust that on. Same thing over here. In this case, I actually do want some on the wood itself. So just put it on there with the brush. And then you can just blast it with some hairspray to soak it down. Notice it turns a darker color when it's uh it's been hit with the hairspray. And we'll let that dry. The the paint on the metal guardrail here is really really thick, so it's gonna take quite a while to dry. Alright, so now if we wanted to set up some roads, but um Make it to where you're not going to be able to go that way. You can stuck on the thing. Drop a barricade in the way. Put some of these in the way. You can use them to line the uh, the highway. I don't know if you guys have seen these things on the side of the highway for like no reason whatsoever, but I have. I don't know what they're doing. You could also put magnets and stuff in these. If you wanted them to snap together to make huge lines of them. If your uh, metal railing one ended up sticking out past the edge of the foam, you just trim that off with some scissors. And then they should sit together pretty nicely, just like so. A little bit of a gap in the concrete, but that's fine. You could cut that, cut this one more, however you want to do it. But uh, that'll work for some barricades. So if you were to block off a road like this in Gaslands, then uh, this car is about to have a real bad day. And I have a wipeout. So there you go, a bunch of different uh, barricade styles. Of course, you could put magnets in these ones if you wanted to have huge rows of them. You could probably weight them down if you wanted to, but it's really unnecessary. Um, these ones take up some room in the storage just because they're so big. So do if you want to use those or not. These are probably what I'm going to use more often than anything else, just because they're convenient and I can cut them out really, really quickly. But uh, there you go, there's uh, three kinds of barricades, and uh, not not really hard to do, actually. It's one of the faster things I've done in a long time. Of course, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.